Brazil, Sao Paulo issues a new lockdown due to the worsening COVID-19 crisis. Venezuela's President Nicolás Maduro receives the Russian COVID-19 vaccine. And more African countries receive COVID-19 vaccines. Hello and welcome to Telesur. I'm Jose Daniel Lopez in Quito, Ecuador, and this is from the South. Brazil's city of Sao Paulo has issued a new lockdown due to the worsening COVID-19 health crisis. State Governor Joao Doria said starting Saturday, bars and restaurants will only do deliveries, while malls and non-essential businesses will shut for two weeks. This as he noted that a new patient was placed in intensive care units every two minutes. With a new coronavirus variant from the Amazon spurring more infections, studies say almost 2,000 people have died in the past 24 hours, adding to the nearly 260,000 COVID-19 casualties in the country. Brazil has the second highest coronavirus death toll in the world after the United States. Protesters have clashed with police in Paraguay's capital as anger over the government's handling of the coronavirus epidemic is spilled onto the streets. The security forces fire rubber bullets and tear gas at hundreds of rioters who gather around the Congress building in downtown Asuncion late on Friday. While protesters broke down security barriers, burned broad barricades and threw stones at law enforcement. Citizens have demanded the resignation of President Mario Abdo Benitez as coronavirus infections hit record levels and hospitals are on the verge of collapse. As of Friday, Paraguay had nearly 166,000 COVID-19 cases and over 3,000 deaths. Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro has received his first dose of the Russian Sputnik V coronavirus vaccine. President Maduro got his jab as part of the country's vaccination plan, which saw healthcare workers and frontline personnel este among to be the first to be humanized. Public vaccinations will begin in April, and the, co the government says 70% uh, of Venezuelans <laughs> should be inoculated by the end of 2021. Venezuelan authorities gathered at the Cuartel de la Montaña in Caracas, the barracks where Hugo Chavez remains lie to mark the eighth anniversary of the former leader's death on Friday. After a tribute by the National Bolivarian Armed Forces earlier in the day, political figures assembled to pay tribute to, Coman to Comandante Hugo Chavez, who is remembered not only in Venezuela, but across Latin America and the rest of the world for his contribution to the struggle for uh, social justice, equality, progress, and against uh, imperialism and its devastating consequences for the peoples of the world. Hugo Chavez burst onto the national political scene on February 4, 1992, when he assumed responsibility for the events of that day, during which the movement he led sought to topple the new liberal government. His uh, phrase, recognizing defeat but not noting the objectives had not been met for now, became call for those seeking justice and change in the country. He became president in 1999 and led the transformation of Venezuela through the Bolivarian Revolution, giving a voice to, to the huge majority of the country, previously excluded and silenced. We have the satisfaction of having accompanied him from different battlefronts, all of us who are here from different battlefronts, the youngest people from the school, from high school, from the neighborhood, the less young from the community, from the streets, from the parliament, from the governorates, from the major's office, from the national government, having accompanied him from the home, from the family, we have the satisfaction of having seen a nation awaken under his eternal rebellion of February the 4th, 1992. We have the satisfaction as a generation of having seen the construction of this powerful revolutionary and Bolivarian social movement. He asked us for unity, he asked us for unity, that in any circumstance we must know how to maintain unity and the spirit of this homeland above all circumstances. If we truly love Hugo Chavez, if we cherish Hugo Chavez, we are obliged to obey Hugo Chavez. March the 5th, Commander, here we are, here we are on March the 5th, honoring you who deserves honor. We wish you were not where you are, but we know that in spite of being here at this site, 
When we see the smile of a child in the street, there is the smile of Hugo Chavez. In the gaze of a man, of a woman, there is Hugo Chavez. In the family embrace, Commander Hugo Chavez is there. Hugo Chavez is present across the entire homeland, now and forever. Commander, eternal loyalty to your memory and your legacy, ever onward to victory, Commandante. In Bolivia, diplomatic authorities pay tribute to the leader of the Bolivarian Revolution. At a ceremony held at the Venezuelan Embassy in La Paz, diplomats of both countries honor the memory of the eternal commander. Meanwhile, human rights defenders and representatives of social movements recall Chavez's legacy, including his struggle for the integration of Latin America and the Caribbean and for the self-determination of the peoples of the world. Cubans also pay tribute to Commander Chavez at the headquarters of the Cuban Institute of Friendship with the People. The ambassador of Venezuela in Cuba and brother of Commander Chavez, Adam Chavez, highlighted the legacy of the Bolivarian Revolution. He also recalled the brotherhood between Chavez and Fidel Castro, who united in the struggle for the integration of the world. We'll take a short break now. Join us again in a minute. Pope Francis has held a meeting with Shi'i top cleric Grand Ayatollah Ali Sistani in a landmark movement in modern religious history. The two respected men of religion met in the city of Najab early on Saturday in the second day of the first ever papal visit to Iraq. The meeting also marked the first time a pope has met with such a senior Shi'i cleric. The 84-year-old pontiff is defying a second wave of coronavirus cases and renew security fears to mark to make the long-awaited trip to Iraq, aiming to conform the uh, country's Asian Christian community, while also deepening his dialogue with other religions. And speaking during an interfaith service, Pope Francis called for peace and coexistence in the world. Peace does not demand winners or losers but rather brothers and sisters, who for all the misunderstandings and hurts of the past, are journeying from conflict to unity. Let us ask for this in praying for the whole Middle East. Here, I think especially of neighboring war-torn Syria. Hostility, extremism, and violence are not born of a religious heart. They are betrayals of religion. We believers cannot be silent when terrorism abuses religion. The West Bank city of Nablus has gone back into complete lockdown after spiking cases. The city governor, Ibrahim Ramadan, announced on Thursday a total lockdown for one week starting Saturday, which includes a ban on movement of vehicles and closure of all shops and industries. Also on Thursday, Palestine extended its coronavirus-related state of emergency by a month following an increase in confirmed COVID-19 cases. Israel has vaccinated more than half of the, its population with a first dose, but has so far provided the Palestinian Authority with only 2,000 vaccine doses. More than 2.5 million Palestinians live in the West Bank, with an additional 2 million in Gaza. We did this, the closure of Neblas, due to the high numbers of people infected with the virus in the government, which led to the number reaching the red signal, which rings the alarm in the Neblas government. So sadly, we had to do this procedure. We know that the closure harms the economy. It harms the merchants and harms the poor, but the closure is only for public health. 
Thousands of Palestinian citizens of uh, Israel took to the streets on Friday to protest against the police failure to stem a rising tide of violence in Arab communities. With 20 Palestinians killed in the last two months, the inhabitants of Ub al Fine city they decided to demonstrate against police officers who they accused of working with criminal organizations. Security forces responded with rubber bullets, stun grenades, and water cannons, injuring dozens of protesters, including the mayor of the city. Anti-coup demonstrators in Myanmar have returned to the streets of Yangon a day after United Nations envoy urged uh, the Security Council to restore democracy. Security forces have escalated an increasingly brutal uh, crackdown on demonstrators, killing more than 50 people since the coup, but protesters rally, uh, rally again on Saturday. The generals have shown no signs for restraint despite mounting international pressure, including target sanctions by Western powers. The country's uh, vital sectors have been crippled by an ongoing civil disobedience movement, a campaign urging civil servants to boycott working under a military regime. However, workers have been uh, threatened to be fired with effect from March 8 if they continue. Thousands of Indian farmers have blocked a massive highway outside New Delhi to mark the 100 day of protest against controversial agricultural laws. Farmers burned dummies and chanted slogans against Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Thousands have uh, hunkered down outside New Delhi's borders since late November to voice their anger over three laws passed in Parliament last year. They fear that the legislation signals that authorities are moving away from a system in which an overwhelming majority of farmers would sell only to government-sanctioned marketplaces. They worry this will leave them at the mercy of corporations that will have no legal obligation to pay them the guarantee price. This government is being obstinate, but they don't know that this is a community of food-producing people that they are standing against. Whoever has clashed with this community has been decimated in politics. This Modi government is delusional. In the coming days, you will see that this is no longer just a farmer's movement, that it has become a people's movement. When farmers think about their land, which we consider to be our mother, that's what will motivate us, because if we lost that, then what will we do when we go back, we are sitting here for our land until these black laws are repealed. We will continue to sit here, so that's our motivation. The Dalai Lama has encouraged people to take a vaccination against COVID-19 as he was getting his job at a hospital in northern India. My trusted friend, including doctor, is it they suggest uh, should take this injection. So, uh, in order to prevent some serious problem, is this injection is very, very helpful, uh, very good. So, uh, the, those other patient also you see, should uh, take you see, this injection uh, uh, for greater benefit. So that's very important. Uh, so I took that. So I want to share more people they should have courage to take this, this injection. We'll take a short break now. Don't go away. back. Millions of people in Ivory Coast have voted in parliamentary elections five months after a presidential poll that was marked by violence. More than 1,500 candidates are vying for the votes of roughly 7 million people in a contest for the 255-seat National Assembly. In contrast to the bloodshed that occurred during the October 31st ballot, campaigning was calm as well as candidates pledged to support peaceful elections and sign a code of conduct. According to opinion polls, President Alassane Quattara's rally of um, when is uh, for democracy and peace is expected to win an uh, absolute majority of the seats. That's the first real pluralist election in 20 years. I see that there's no tension in the air. 
I've just spoken to the Minister of the Interior. He tells me that things are going well everywhere, and I hope that the day ends well, as well as the count. Good luck to all the candidates. Senegalese police clashed with protesters in several neighborhoods of the capital Dakar on Friday, included in the front of a courthouse where an opposition leader made his first appearance since his arrest on a rape charge. A lawyer for Usmani Sonko said he was being charged with rape and making threats, allegations that have led to clashes since his arrest on Wednesday between his supporters and police officers in several towns. Four people have died in the violence. Sonko has denied wrongdoing and says accusations are part of a pattern by authorities of making up criminal charges to block opponents from standing in elections. For our comrade Osmond Sonko, for me it's a plot and it is arbitrary, but it has nothing to do with the luring and seeing. So promoting democracy has nothing to do with acts of delinquency. We have really built an emerging commune, and we have done enough promotion and openness to allow investors to come to the Medina, the Chinese and the French Ocean, so we don't allow bandits to come from elsewhere to plunder the Medina. Meanwhile, the Senegalese government has accused Sonko of calling for an insurrection and vowed to use all means necessary to restore order and calm in the country. On the other hand, he, Osman Sanko, has through repeated messages issued cause to violence, insurrection, and the weakening of the authority of the state. These acts of provocation, unprecedented and without parallel, with support of identified occult forces, provoked violent demonstrations in several neighborhoods of the capital and in other localities of the country. In Somalia, at least 20 people were killed and 40 injured after a bomb exploded in capital Mogadishu. According to authorities, the incident occurred when a, a rickshaw loaded with explosives hit a popular restaurant near the capital's port. The attack was claimed by the Al-Qaeda linked Al-Shabaab group. Uh, Mogadishu is regularly targeted with attacks by Al-Shabaab, which uh, has been waging a long and violent insurgency, seeking to unseat the country's internationally backed government. In Kenya, teams from the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization are using small planes to spray pesticide after a vast worm of desert locusts hit the central region of the country. The UN has warned that about 3.5 million people in the wider region could be impacted by the new wave of locusts by May. Now, when we look at the magnitude of the problem, it's much bigger than, uh, than an outbreak. Right? It's an upsurge. Right? So that's really the second biggest intermediate level of, uh, of uh, infestation that is spreading across the entire region from Sudan to Somalia to Kenya. So there are eight, nine countries in the region and then in Yemen where we have massive infestation of, uh, of uh, desert locusts since now 18 months, frankly speaking. Uganda has received the first shipment of 864,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine through the COVAX initiative. The shipment delivered by the Emirates Airline was received at the Entebbe International Airport by the Minister of Health. The U.S. ambassador to the country and the representative of the World Health Organization, among other diplomats. Uganda aims to vaccinate 20% of its population by May. This is just the beginning of our journey to vaccinate an estimated 22 million persons against COVID-19, including the refugee populations. Further information on the vaccination schedules for the rest of the population will be provided from time to time as we receive more vaccines. Evidence has shown the vaccine, including this Astra vac AstraZeneca vaccine, to be able to prevent deaths of COVID almost 100%. I repeat, death is prevented at a level of 100% and it is safe for all age groups above 18. The COVAX facility which WHO, UNICEF and other partners are members has allocated over 3.5 million doses of AstraZeneca vaccine for Uganda and the remaining two, two over, over 2.6 million doses are expected before June. 
Protesters in Australia have taken to the streets in Sydney to commemorate uh, a, a 1978 march of LGBTQ rights. Protesters rallied through Sydney's Oxford Street along the road of 1978 protests, which sparked the original Sydney gay and lesbian Mardi Gras over 40 years ago. The protests, led by the LGBTQ community, carry banners calling for the end of the indigenous Australian deaths in custody and equal rights for transgender people. Meanwhile, the official Mardi Gras parade was uh, forced into the Sydney cricket ground over fears that the usual crowds could spread COVID-19. Our dynamism in the 1970s was this desire for justice. And I want to ask you, have we got justice yet? Have we got justice yet? Those of us who were active politically in the 60s and 70s like me, we had an energy and we, had, we knew where it came from. I remember that night when we broke through the cordon of police. On Saturday, France has begun speeding up its national COVID-19 vaccination campaign, opening hundreds of vaccination centers over the weekend in Paris and across the country. The weekend drive comes after the French government came under criticism for the slow start of the vaccination campaign. Infection rates have stayed high for several weeks and, viral and various patients currently occupy 71% of the country's intensive care units. The country is still under a national curfew from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., with additional lockdown measures extended on Saturday to the region surrounding the, north, the northern port of Dunkirk. Uh, French authorities have reported 88,300 virus-related deaths, one of the highest tolls in Europe. You know that we have 170,000 people over the age of 75 in Paris, and if we don't open on Sunday, it's for one reason. There's still not enough doses. That's all. We were ready to do it every day, even having extended hours. This is the case. We open longer and every day, and we also open more cubicles. There are 12,000 doses available in Paris this weekend. We are not anymore in the situation of a lack of doses, but more precisely in the situation to manage to inject the doses to all those who want it, so we have changed faces. A bus carrying dozens of Ukrainian citizens crashed in Poland, killing six and injuring 41, Polish media reported on Saturday. The accident occurred near the town of Jaroslaw, near the border with Ukraine. The bus rolled off an embankment into a ditch. A large rescue operation was launched early Saturday involving dozens of firefighters, paradigmics and helicopters. Ukrainians regularly travel to Poland for work. They fill gaps in the labor market, which has experienced fast economic growth in recent years. The consular services of Ukraine were informed about the accident. Efficient action meant that the time of assistance and the care of people who did not require hospitalization was exemplary. Massacre. Massacre. It was massacre. The bus lost control and went out of the way. It was very horrible. And we come to the end of this news brief. You can find this and many other stories in our website at tellsourenglish.net. And join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for Telesur English. I'm Jose Ariel Lopez. Thank you for watching.